Andre, you have the floor. I would like to focus uh, on the state of the global financial industry 12 years after the crisis, uh, quickly. Uh, the U.S. In, is in very good shape, actually. The, the U.S. financial system is in good shape. There's no question about that. Uh, Europe, we have a problem. <laughs> After 12 years of regulation, or thanks to the CFS and Basel III, the, the balance sheets of the banks are in very good shape. The income statements are terrible. The, today, the market value, the market cap of the major uh, European banks is well below their net, as, their net book value. Uh, negative rates don't help at all, of course. So they are squeezed between regulation, which has been very, I think, slightly stronger in Europe than in the US to, be, to understate the, the, the situation, uh, and uh, the credit situation, which is very difficult. I remind you that in uh, Europe, the banking system supplies 80% of the financing of the economy against 20% in the US. So it's very important in terms of the European economy. Second point, uh, we're facing, we, I say, I'm no longer in the banking system, I'm on boards, but not uh, involved uh, directly. Uh, the, there is uh, the revolution which was started in 2008 was also the first iPhone. Uh, today, uh, we see a number of so-called neobanks, which raise amounts, huge amounts of money uh, trying to do the Amazon thing in banking. In other words, you get customers, you lose money for that, and you raise money, and you raise hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, and hoping that one day you'll make money. Uh, an example is N26, a bank which was started in Germany, now has a, has a European license, and just announced three and a half million customers. Uh, losing money all the time, of course. So the French banks and the European banks in general are really squeezed. Uh, I'm worried because they're the ones who supply funds for their growth. Two, they're cutting staff significantly, which I think they have to do. Three, they have to, ma to live with a legacy of computer systems which did not anticipate the smartphone. So may, we may have overshot to some extent in terms of regulation. If you add to that anti-laundering measures, I just uh, counted that in a small bank, I'm, I'm on the board of a small bank in France, 12% uh, of the staff is used only in, on money laundering and regulation questions, 12%. Uh, so uh, nothing, uh, is, the banking industry has never been uh, very popular. Uh, in that case, I think there is a risk that it can have a negative, negative impact on uh, on the European growth in the next uh, few months, actually. Thank you. Thank you very I'm much. Three minutes, I'm sure. It's true that uh, what you said, 80% uh, or 75% of the financing in Europe comes through banks. In the US, it's only perhaps 25, something like that. Uh, the idea that markets are much more reliable in time of crisis than banks is a wrong idea, of course. Liquidity can evaporate for markets and creates absolute blockade of the financing of the US. And then, of course, you have always the possibility for the central bank to reconstitute liquidity on markets massively. It is what happened clearly in the last crisis, and it might happen in the next crisis, with a lot of, uh, uh, of course, uh, drawbacks and uh, major difficulty. But uh, thank you very much, André, indeed. I think that what you said uh, for the French banks is true for all European banks, I guess. And uh, what is the most striking, uh, but we have German citizens uh, in this working party, is that the most important uh, GDP by far of Europe, uh, the most important exporter of Europe, the most uh, brilliant uh, economy of Europe in terms of competitiveness, has a banking system which does not correspond at all to what we should normally observe. But we will perhaps discuss that with the German friends.